Acoustic Field Fossil Studios uh, in uh, discussion, Mark 2. Uh, we were just chatting offline, and the guys wanted to just um, dig into Dennis's background a little bit more, because obviously we've, we've had some discussions, but we thought this could be useful for other people to hear. So um, I'm going to hand this over to uh, Raz, um, uh, who is going to... Find out, probe Dennis, shall we say, a little bit more about his background and, and what he's done. <laughs> thanks, Ali. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you, Dennis. Um, so, you know, we were wondering, we're all interested in sound and, and music and, and, you know, what, what, what were your first steps, you know, I mean, what, what's your, when, when do you first remember yourself being into acoustic? I mean, were you playing in the, in the, in the kindergarten, you know, and, and asking all oh, that bass sounds heavy, man. <laughs> I, I was, yeah, I I was actually playing trumpet on stage, and I was playing blue velvet, and I was I think six or seven years old. And I couldn't believe how bad the auditorium sounded. <laughs> <laughs> so from then I uh, grew uh, all the way through uh, sound and, and uh, hi-fi systems and um, building. I was a real estate developer for 20 years and finally hooked up with a company who wanted rooms that sounded good. and gave me eight guys and a bunch of money in eight years and said, go find us a solution to the issues that people have in their room. Now, these were conference rooms. These were not really music studios or things like that, but rooms really are rooms when it comes to pressure, and it's all about pressure. You have a box. You have a wavelength that has a particular length, if it won't fit in the box, it's going to be upset. And if it's upset, it's going to make noise. And that's what you're working around in your studio at 61 Cycles. 61 Cycles does not like your studio. It doesn't like the room size. So it's going to tell you. It'll express its discontent very, very dramatically sometimes. And um, that's what rooms are. They're really pressure chambers and we don't realize that, um, especially when it comes to music. And We hear just enough, I think, sometimes to realize that we either don't like it or we like it, but the room gets in the way so much of what you hear because of low frequency bleed. And it's actually a bleed into the middles and low mids that is not necessarily audible all the time, just sometimes in some mixes. So you need consistency and we need to reduce pressure. So for eight years I, I bought three homes and the middle home was the research laboratory and it was a large home so we had three different rooms going on at once, uh, different construction materials, uh, I went after low frequency first, different uh, fill materials inside the walls, different layers, and um, the people who worked with me, the eight guys, they lived in the two houses next to me because they would return home late from the pub and work started at 6 a.m. and I had to get them all out of bed. <laughs> so that's why they live so close to to the work, but yeah, we, we did this for eight years and I finally came up with a low frequency solution using charcoal and carbon and and the carbon really was an accident. I was in the kitchen one day in the office and the filter was blinking on the faucet and I couldn't get it apart. I, I couldn't figure that out so I hit it with the hammer and out on the counter comes all this charcoal and I'm thinking that it's filtering our water and and then I realized it filters air too in the in the office buildings I was building well it 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 might have an impact on sound 
because sound is in air and sound is in water. So that was my simple thinking and that's what we came up with uh, the activated carbon and when I first tested it I thought our equipment didn't work. When the Riverbanks lab tested it, the independent lab tested it, they ran the test three times because they didn't think their equipment worked. So they said, how did you get so much performance in such a small amount of real estate? And I said, well, it's a combination of many things, and please don't cut my units open. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I could tell by their questioning, the engineers questioning, that they wanted to get inside. Yeah, yeah of course. And I completely understand that. So um, that's why I had to tell them, please do not cut into them. <laughs> so that's how we came up with, we took the shell of a real room that, that's made for no, no vibration because anything moving we all know in the business creates sound. Yeah. Now, it's not a major sound if one thing is moving, but if you've got a lot of things in the room moving, a lot of little things, they all add up to a big thing. So you have to stop and look at each individual thing in, in the wall's construction, and then you finally get a wall over, took me about five and a half years to get a, a system with multiple layers that doesn't vibrate. And then when you put the carbon on the inside of this really strong box and force the front part of the unit to slow the wave down before it gets into the carbon, you really get high rates and levels at really low frequencies. So it's uh, it was a little bit of luck and then a little bit of uh, R&D over uh, six or eight years and then our foam came about the same way. I hated the way middle and high frequencies were dealt with by the foams on the marketplace. Yeah, They just drained the energy out of the vocals. They took away all the tone, all the timber, that the engineer put in when it was recorded. And I know what goes into vocals. I know what you guys go through. I know the care and the detail and the layering and the textures and all those things that make or break a vocal. I couldn't hear them in these rooms. And I would build one room with the current best foam seller on the marketplace. I'd build another room with the best foam seller on the marketplace. And i walk in, I couldn't tell the difference. And it was just not good. So I went about uh, for about seven years developing our own foam and it nearly made me insane. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it. <laughs> so basically what, what you were researching is uh, you were looking for alternative materials that handle the different frequencies in a, in a more efficient way. Well, yes, I, I was hoping a, a person from another planet would bring me some magical substance I could use oh, nice. inside of the units, but um, no, I, I had to work with what we had out there, and, and uh, I think we tried 14 different cabinet fill materials before we came upon the carbon, and the carbon is uh, one gram has 2,000 square meters, one gram has 2,000 square meters of surface area. I put 65 pounds <laughs> inside of our absorbers. <laughs> That's so, so we don't have, Raz, we don't have to be scared of base anymore in our rooms. We don't have to work around it anymore. Yeah, I figured out. I figured out a way to absorb it and get rid of it. That's fantastic, Dennis. That is really exciting, because we love bass, and <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately for us, is a love-hate relationship. But um, we really do love it, and and you know, most of the people who come to Fossil Studios, they love our love of bass. You know, so. Tell, tell us something about Fossil Studios. 
Well, Fossil Studios uh, is based in East London, in, in, in Hackney, um, which is uh, quite a vibrant part of town, full of artists and musicians. And there's a big community here of many, many talented people and very creative and uh, lots of nice authentic restaurants as well. <laughs> and um, a nice melting pot, you know, of a, of a big, uh, of a big town. Um, and we're fortunate to work with a lot of people. We we do here uh, a lot of uh, different kind of work, a lot of recording work, uh, a lot of uh, production for artists, a lot of writing. We score films. Um, we have a nice uh, big space next door where we can, you know, fit big bands in and, and you know, Fossil Studios, it's been now four years and it's been growing rapidly and, um, yeah, we're, we're just in it for the music and, uh, and the low, low frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, luckily, luckily our neighbors don't hear anything, so um, the building is isolated. Um, Sound is not going outside, but um, yeah, we you know we are we are very excited about you helping us, and then this is this is very very exciting because you know what we do here we sit here in this room and open our ears and listen, and that is quite you know that is quite a demanding mental. Disciplined, you know, and and when when room acoustics doesn't help you with that and and makes it that much difficult, you know. So I can only imagine, you know, how you know not only acoustically how things are going to sound, but how how much easier my my day is going to become. It's going to have a massive, massive impact on on our lives. <laughs> Seriously, you know. So it's very exciting. Good, good. Well, the the real area is going to be attack and decay. So, yeah. I, and I know, I know that would bring a smile to your face. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Well, I'm really looking forward to this, Raz, and it's a great opportunity because you have a base issue that. Uh, it is difficult, but not too difficult that we can't get really nice results uh, f fairly quickly. Fantastic. Looking forward to it, Dennis. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Nice one. Cheers, Alec.